Good evening and welcome back to the Chelsea Flower Show. Now, it might be late September, but if this year's Chelsea has shown us anything, it's that the arrival of autumn is no reason to put your garden to bed. This garden is one of many that include a mass of wonderful plants to enjoy throughout the winter. And there are plenty of ways to make your garden feel like a cosy haven, somewhere to hunker down throughout the winter, no matter how low the temperatures plummet. I can feel the temperature plummeting here, Richard. I'm getting a bit chilly. Well, we're in the Himalayas, Monty. Well, tonight we're going to be taking a closer look at how you can enjoy your garden, the natural world, indoors and out, all the way through till spring. In other words, keep calm and carry on gardening. We have plenty of ideas to help you do that here at the RHS Chelsea Flower Show, an event supported by M&G. I will be combing the gardens for plants that promise a sensory hit no matter the season. We pay a visit to Texas front woman Charlene Spiteri's rambling wildlife haven in North Wales with a veg patch that is of Michelin star quality. And we'll find out who the public chose as their favourite RHS People's Choice small garden. Now, this garden, yeah. I mean, is, is it a garden or is it a landscape? Well, we, think, we often have this debate, yeah, we don't do. we? <laughs> we, we it, um, it feels as if it's a garden, but, but it's the, the wilder landscape encroaching onto this area where we're sitting, which is just fantastic. I think that's why it's so good, uh, is because if it's too much of a landscape, and it ceases to be a garden and, and becomes a bit of a stage set, which can be wonderful, but isn't really a garden. No, it feels as if someone's out there pruning and sort yeah. of lifting a few shrubs, but the plants are definitely, compared to some of the other gardens here, they're closely planted together. It's got that wild feel as if your things are self-seeded and they're battling it out. And what you feel in this garden is that it will change. Some plants will take over, some plants will die back, it will evolve, whereas there are other gardens that you feel are just perfect set pieces that you, you enjoy for five days and then that's gone. Yeah, and I think at this time of year as well, it works beautifully in the autumn, doesn't it? Well, I think it's absolutely lovely. It is gorgeous. Yeah. Now, it's the perfect time to start thinking about plants that we can put in now for spring. And to help us make the right choices, Rachel's been into the Great Pavilion to select her top five from the new plants making their Chelsea debut. One of the many things I love about gardening is that there's always something new to discover. Not least, new plants. And every year at Chelsea, nurserymen and women bring new plants to the show. And this year, there are some absolute beauties. So here are my top five new plants for 2021. I dare you not to fall for this one. It's Camellia Summer Nights Jasmine. And just look at the colour of those flowers, a really intense coral red, absolutely beautiful. And this Camellia is the result of a 20-year breeding programme in China to develop a whole new range of Camellias that have a really good hardiness, which is excellent for us in the UK, and a long flowering period. as a picture is how you'd have to describe this river of glandularia margaret's memory most of us actually would say verbena so beautiful it's a real color break that lovely pale shell pink and then in the very center of the flower a little bit of magenta as a sort of highlight now it likes mostly sort of sunny conditions will take a little bit of shade and best of all pollinating insects absolutely love it This gorgeous fig immediately caught my eye, and I think the clue is in the name. It's called Little Miss Figgy. Unlike some of the varieties, the popular ones we grow here at the moment, which become really large shrubs or even small trees, this one's going to stay at about a metre 20 or so in spread and in height. So it's perfect, not only growing directly in the ground, but in a container like this one. It's going on my shopping list. Pinks never really go out of fashion. Just look at this new variety. It's called Berry Blush. There's a sort of maroon circle around the centre and this toothed edging, hence pinking shears, that sort of toothed edge. And it's a super plant for a really sunny spot, scented too. I think that is a gorgeous new plant. 
also, I am very taken with this, Hylotelephium. Many people would still say sedum, and it's called Dream Dazzler, this new variety. It has variegated foliage, so rather hard to see it this time of year underneath all the froth of dusky pink flowers. It's really a beauty. So I think some fantastic new introductions this year. Some of them just might be coming home with me. Earlier today, Sophie and Joe surprised the winner of one of Chelsea's most sought after accolades, the BBC RHS People's Choice Show Garden Award, voted for by the viewers. And this was the moment that they presented the designer, Tom Massey, with the award on the Yo Valley Organic Garden. <laughs> It's always fascinating to me which garden wins the people's choice because we're here all week and we see the gardens, we form our informed opinions by going on them, but viewers obviously get a different look and I'm going to have to negotiate these steps quite carefully. And what I think people love about this garden, and I love it too, is that over the last year or so we've all had time to really appreciate how important the natural elements of our garden is. And to see a garden that's organic, that is so carefully planted with native plants that really conjures up the essence of all that is good about the countryside and gardens and sustainable that we can all share. And I think that's tapped in and therefore has rightfully been honored with this award. Now, Tom, you must still be slightly reeling. I, I am, yeah, yes. really uh, amazing result, but yeah, quite It's a been surprise. a good week. Gold medal. Gold medal. People's award. People's choice, yeah. People's choice. Uh, what do you think that people found in your garden? Um, I think it's partly the message, the organic message, the first organic show garden at Chelsea, the support of the Soil Association, the uh, planting for biodiversity, all the kind of stories and ideas woven through. I think there's a real... I mean, I'm seeing it in my private work. There's a real shift towards more sustainable practice, sustainable yeah. gardening, yeah. being kinder to the environment, not killing off all the insects, you know, reducing the use of chemicals in gardening. So I think it's uh, partly that. Um, I think maybe also partly embracing of autumn, you know, the fact that this is yeah. the one and only September show and this garden really celebrates that. You know, you've got things going over, you've got the autumn colours, you've got the the kind of birch trees dropping their leaves. I mean, what you're saying is, is what I suspect, that, that it's a sort of exemplar, a perfect example of what's going on in their lives. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, exactly, you know, I it's, suppose. It's picked up in people's back gardens and said, OK, here's some magic dust and this is what it could be like. <laughs> well, I hope so. I mean, yeah, you know, that's... Uh, if people are inspired... I, I, you know, this, this is my favourite time of year, I think, yeah. in the garden. And for, you know, for farmers, for harvest, for that kind of... that bounty, that time where summer's over and it's... You, everything's a bit more relaxed, a bit more kind of... Um, chilled out and it's that, that time of year where the seasons are changing there's a little chill in the air you get that really amazing low light yeah. and I think this garden shows that off well, really well congratulations because okay. it's one thing to win prizes but actually to be loved as well as people obviously do with this garden that's something special yeah, so well, well done. it's a testament to organic and I think it's a great message okay well now it's time to announce the result of another people's vote Earlier on, Joe joined the RHS Director of Gardens and shows Helena Pettit for another magical moment. This is exciting, this is the moment. Come on, Helena, let's go and surprise him. Come on, then. Come on. He's in the blue shirt. Alan! Hi! Hi. Congratulations, you are the RHS People's Choice winner for Chelsea Flower Show 2021 for Small Gardens. Thank you. Congratulations. Take that. Thank you, Helena. Thank you. Well done. Congratulations. Congratulations. Brilliant. Lee, you're happy, aren't you? Yeah, I'm always happy. Oh. <laughs> How does it feel? Oh Amazing. And actually, yeah, who would have believed it? And yeah, I, I don't know what to say, actually. I'm speechless. Did you, have, did you have any idea? No, I just loved how 
the public have adored the garden and it's been really well received. Yeah, this is like the icing on the cake. It's a big one, isn't it? It is, it's amazing. And just thank you to the general public for voting. It's amazing. <laughs> I really did enjoy that moment. But of course, it's not all about winning awards. The gardens here have got everybody talking. And one of those is the Guide Dog's 90th anniversary garden. But before we meet the designers, here's the story behind it. <laughs> You're happy, aren't you? Hello, Hello. Janet. Hello. Lovely, lovely to meet you. Oh, lovely. <laughs> And who's this? This is Nugget. Hiya, Nugget. The most, wow. I call Good him Mr. Wonderful. Mr. Wonderful. Oh, <laughs> he's stunning. He's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. Hello, you. Oh. Yes. So, Janet, when did you first realise that you were losing your sight? Um, I think I probably knew from the age of 12 that I wasn't seeing the same as other children because I was known as a clumsy child. Well, I was around 27 and the, they told me, you've got no peripheral vision, you've got retinitis pigmentosa, and you'll have useful but very limited vision for 10 to 15 years. So what's your sight like now, Janet? Now, all I can see is light and dark, but of course, just that small diameter of two degrees. When did you first get involved with, you know, with, with having a guide dog? 1984, I got my first guide dog. Having guide dogs, how's that changed your life? Oh, it was wonderful. I felt so liberated. I dread to live without a guide dog now. They give you an awful lot of confidence. It's just made such a big difference to my life and such a wonderful companion as well and keeping me really safe. This dog is fantastic. So, Janet, the, the garden is wonderful. Uh, when did you first get interested in gardening? Well, when I first came here, really, the garden was such a mess, so um, I just wanted to make it look nice and full of colour. Having sight loss, how, how has it affected how you do garden, how you sort of practically garden? Oh, well, I actually sit down on the ground and I run my hands over the ground and I, um, I feel the stringy weeds. You've got oh, a Deutzia. A, a Deutzia, a, a yeah, Deutzia. that's new this year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, you're good at <laughs> <laughs> Do you find since you, you've lost your sight that you're more aware of those other aspects oh, of the plants now? Oh, uh, yes. When I had partial sight, all I wanted was bright colours all over the place. Yeah, yeah. But now I love the fragrances and I love the feel of things. It's so different. Everything's so different. The apples taste nice and the blueberries. Thank you, Janet. It's, it, it's been lovely meeting you today. Thank you. And it, it's certainly given us a lot to think about, hasn't it, with some of the planting that we're going to use at the garden at, at Chelsea, bearing in mind all those sensual elements. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is our design for, uh, for Chelsea this year. The garden shows a journey from isolation to independence. You know, there is a, a stone hollow and there is a path that leads out of that place and on the top of the path is a sculpture. And this sculpture, um, it could be anybody, it could be Janet, it, it could be somebody that is, is now liberated from that place of darkness and despair to a place of acceptance and awakening and, and joy, if you like. When we spoke to Janet, um, she said how important it was that there were blocks, bold blocks of colour. So we're going to use, you know, some of these things, like the Rebecca's, um, contrasting with whites as well, so you can see the contrast that she could appreciate. Janet had loads of herbs in the garden and sort of thyme, basil, all sorts of things, and chamomile and mint. And, uh, you know, that was quite important to her because it, it had um, that aromatic fragrance that alerted the senses. Having that at the edge of the garden, on the, near the path, sort of spilling over, it gives that kind of um, nice sort of fragrance. This will be the first time Janet's been to Chelsea and we just kind of hope that what we've created is what Janet's expecting. And that's sort of quite a pressure, isn't it, really? Because we just normally design gardens and, and perhaps a bit selfishly in the past, you know, for people that we assume just have 
normal sight, but of course, you know, many, many people don't. So this, yeah. this has been a sort of a different kind of challenge. I hope she likes it. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs>
That's a variegated variety, and it's a pretty old one called Phoenix. And again, that hasn't been in commercial production for about 30 years, so that's another one that we're working to bring back. So it's risen from the ashes. <laughs> well, indeed, yeah. yes. Apple, aptly named. I'd love that in my garden. I can think of all sorts of different ways to use it. And that yellow bit in the middle, that, that would look just gorgeous, wouldn't it, with all these oh, yes. autumnal flowers. Woo, it's very exciting. If I'm going to cut some of these, because they can cut the garden varieties just as well as the greenhouse ones. Well, they make perfect cut flowers, but you wouldn't cut them, would you? You would twist and rip them. And that promotes new growth. It certainly does, and that will ensure you have lots of colour throughout the season. Yeah, because that's what you want. And they flower for so long. And you couldn't ask for anything more in a garden plant. Well, I don't see why everybody isn't growing them. Well, Carol, I'm convinced. And there are plenty more plants around the Chelsea showground that will not only look gorgeous, but also engage our senses over the coming winter months. And Monty's gone in search of the most significant sensory experiences of this year's Chelsea. In looking for plants that really tap into our senses, I'm starting with taste, because this is autumn. And we all expect to see apples and pears and maybe some autumnal raspberries in our gardens and perhaps here at the show. But actually, the plant that sticks out most for me is this. It's the medlar. And the medlar is a really good small garden tree. It, it spreads, it's got good shape, it doesn't grow too big, it's got lovely blossom, but it also bears this wonderfully interesting fruit. Whether it's delicious or not, it's contentious. Now, it's very gamey, it has a very distinct taste, and I guess that's not a modern thing. But I can tell you from experience, because we have a medlar at Long Meadow, that medlar jelly is delicious with cheese. Touch might be an odd sense to talk about at Chelsea because most people can't get near enough to their gardens to touch them. But the gardens themselves, particularly this September, are full of tactile plants, none more so than the grasses, like this Anamantheli lessoniana, known as pheasant grass to you and I. But also there are a lot of ferns. Your fingers just want to trail through them. It's all about plants that are hanging, that are loose, this sense of the year slipping away, running through your fingers. The sound of Chelsea 2021, to me, is the burble of falling water. You have streams converging and meeting, some of them arising from little waterfalls, others barely more than a bubble coming out of a rock. In some years, water is used formally, you have canals, there may be fountains, but this year it is distinctly natural. And as it falls and tumbles amongst the rocks and the plants, it's quite nice just to stop and listen. My final sense, and of course that is sight. This Chelsea is giving us something very different and something completely new to see. Summer slipping into autumn. The colors are like a faded tapestry. The energy losing from the plants, but regaining its dignity and elegance. But that sense of autumn coming and the slight wistful sorrow of summer receding is found all over Chelsea this year. And it's a visual feast that will sustain me for many months to come. <sighs> now, there's no doubt that Chelsea is packed with brilliant ideas for gardeners of all types, even those with limited outdoor space. Arendt's been to meet two first-time designers who've made a big impression in the brand new container garden category. Designing a garden at Chelsea is exhausting, it's stressful, but also exhilarating. And I should know, I've just delivered my first garden here this year, but I've come to find out how other new designers have found it. Hi, Anna. Hello. 
very lovely to meet you and to see your beautiful garden. How did you actually get into garden design? When I graduated from my high school, I wanted to study landscape architecture, but my parents prompted me to study finance and banking. And I was um, working in finance in Warsaw and in the city for over 10 years. In 2019, I um, decided to have a career break. I also uh, was one of the volunteers, actually last Chelsea, in Tom Dixon IKEA Garden. Well yeah. done, because that's a big turnaround. I know myself, I've had real dips of tiredness and then I come back up again. How has it been for you? I think I'm still all the time for the last two, three weeks on adrenaline. Probably will get tired next week. Well, you've done it now. You've had your first Chelsea experience, but the question is, are you going to come back? Definitely, yes. Good. Yeah. Right answer. We'll Thank see you. you soon. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. I can't believe I last saw you at Tatton. We were finalists for the Young Designer of the Year Award and now here you are, another first time designer at Chelsea. How are you feeling? I'm pretty tired, um, but yeah, I'm feeling good. I think coming, doing Tatton and then doing Chelsea, at least I've got a little bit of experience about the sort of show garden lifestyle um but yeah it's been it's been really really fun yeah i like the way you say that lifestyle because it's not that glamorous yeah. is it yeah it's definitely a lifestyle choice well i certainly know the pressure that it's like being at chelsea You've got to deliver that garden but what difference have you found it from the, the tatton pressure to the chelsea pressure it does feel completely different i mean chelsea is you know the biggest flower show in the world and i think you definitely feel that when you're here but saying that everyone around is so supportive so although there's that pressure you've still got lots and lots of friends around to kind of help you and take the pressure off a little bit <laughs> the garden looks brilliant i have to say i really like the containers and you managed to get the water in here so how did you find it coming from quite a large space at Tatton and shrinking it into um, a more a small space? Yeah, I mean, it was definitely a completely different brief. So this one was all about kind of playing with heights, composition, and trying to be quite clever with definitely introducing like a vertical element to the space. Considering you've had a garden frenzied summer, <laughs> do you think you're going to come back and do another show garden? Well, I don't know. I've got a few ideas of things to do in future, so I don't know. Keep my fingers crossed, maybe for something. In the next I'm sure of years. you'll be you'll be back. <laughs> I can tell you've got the bug. I think I have. <laughs> well, well done to Ellie and Anna and all the first timers who've made their Chelsea debut this year. Joe. I mean, obviously, I've never made a Chelsea debut, uh, although I've observed it. You have. What was it like? Oh, so nerve-wracking. Yeah. You know, because you, the preparation is, you know, years sometimes in the making, and then you turn up and, oh, you're so tired and emotional when, it, you know, when you do get the medal. But, um, you, and you know the judges aren't going to miss a thing. Yeah. I think that one of the things I've noticed over the years is there's a slight tendency to people feel disappointed if they don't get a gold medal straight away. Whereas actually a silver medal is really good yeah. first time round and it can take people five or six years to get to a gold medal, learning and getting better every time. No, sure. And the RHS really nurture people on yeah. as well. They're fit, they give feedback and, and often you see them progress and get better and better yeah. and you know, ultimately get their gold medal. Like you. Just like, oh, I'm glad you mentioned that, Monty. Well, there's plenty more to come tonight from the RHS Chelsea Flower Show, an event supported by M&G. We'll take a trip to a windswept cliff top in deepest Cornwall to meet two nurserymen determined to make their Chelsea debut in spectacular style. Adam Frost will live up to his name with his guide to the design features that will transform your garden into a welcoming sanctuary in the middle of winter. And of course, Monty will face a grilling for the final time in 2021 as we answer your questions in Ask Monty and Joe. Now, we've got a glimpse into the horticultural world of Charlene Spiteri, the front woman of the Glaswegian band Texas. Gardening for me gives me that clarity of mind, it just clears my head. I'm out to get peas, but I'm probably going to eat more than a pick. Breathing in beautiful fresh air and getting your hands dirty and being down your hands and knees. It's a bit of a reality check, isn't it? I'm Charlene Spiteri. I am in the band Texas. I live here with my husband, who is a chef. 
and restaurant owner, and this is where we hock her down. This is a living garden. It's not manicured, so everything doesn't get cut back to look manicured. We literally leave everything till it dies back, and then we'll cut. And obviously that's really good for nature and wildlife as well. This is our little path that we cut all the time for past the lake so you can walk around. Just trying to keep it a bit wild and a bit, yeah, it's all about wild. So we've got some wildflowers going in here, but this is like, it's like, it's like finding one of those paths in an old, in an old house. You're like, oh, there's a staircase. Some people go, is that a weed or is that a plant? And it's like, well, if it is a weed, who cares? Do they like it? I'm just going to leave it in there. It's nice to have little seating spots and little, you know, different views of the garden and to be able to just like chill in different places. It's funny how you pick up on sound. Just to hear the birds and, and just, you know, and the wind blowing and the sound of the trees and the leaves. I don't know, I find it very freeing. I guess it, it stops my jukebox in my head running, which runs a lot, with just music going do -do 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 all the time. There's a lot of beautiful trees in this garden, which is very important because it gives us all the different shades and colours and areas. These are the beautiful Douglas firs. Looking at this amazing bark. It's just beautiful. I love it. A bit of Scotland. A little bit of Scotland in Wales for me. Gardening never started for me. It's just always been there. My mum was a great gardener. My dad's a really good gardener. We used to go to my granddad's allotment. When we were having a little break from picking, we would sit and through the gate, you could see there was a bus stop. And my granddad used to sit on this bench and my granddad would say, okay, so um, tell me this person's story. And we had to take turns and we had to tell a story of what we were looking at. And I really, really think that's what made me a songwriter was that observation of people and emotions and feelings that you feel when you look at them. We are in our um, polytunnel where we do all our tomatoes. Everything's grown from seed. We've also got 25 acres and we supply all the fruit and veg to my husband's restaurants. When I go on tour, I've normally come back with little boxes of seeds of different things. This is a tiger. We call this a tiger. You can see it's got all the stripes, which is cool. And then these, we've got these little babies here, which are actually, believe it or not, these are actually cucumbers, round cucumbers. I think there's always circles in life. And it's funny because it started when, you know, I was a, a young kid. It started in a vegetable plot in, in my granddad's allotment. And, you know, now I still think, God, I wish I could show my granddad my allotment. Lunch is served. The small things in life never leave you. And I've come full circle to basically want my own allotment now. Well, that was wonderful to see somebody as keen on growing vegetables as I am and certainly it makes it even sadder that Charlene wasn't able to join us today as was planned as she's unwell. But I look forward to meeting her in person here at Chelsea in May. So that is a date, Charlene. But now, did you know it's officially autumn? And no doubt we'll be seeing seasonal changes in our gardens over the coming weeks. But they're not a happy accident, oh no. Mother Nature always has a plan. And here's Nick Bailey to reveal all. Aces, particularly the Japanese forms like this, are absolutely renowned for their fantastic colours through the year. However, when it comes to autumn, they get even better. They 
great take on fabulous reds, yellows and oranges. And what's happening is the leaf that's looked basically green through the year is withdrawing all that green chlorophyll pigment, sucking it back into the plant for winter. And what it leaves are pigments that have been there all the way through the year. So things like carotenoids and flavonoids. And those pigments shine out and give you those fantastic red, yellow and orange tones in the foliage. And when it comes to fabulous autumn colour, the two triggers that we really need are really hot days and cool nights. And that is guaranteed to deliver a blaze of autumn colour. On a totally different scale to the Aces is this. It's Nyssa sylvatica. It's one of my favourite autumn trees. Now it goes to 10 or 12 metres, but it gives you the most amazing display. You can see that the leaves are just starting to senesce or move into their autumn mode. And over the next month or so, they will take on amazing bright red, yellow and orange tones and provide a riot of colour to the end of autumn. Leaves aren't the only engines of growth when it comes to trees, particularly the likes of this London Plain. What it has, and all trees have in fact, is across their whole bark surface is a series of small air holes known as lenticels, and that allows oxygen and air to penetrate into the tree and to allow it to grow. There's a particular phenomenon going on with this tree right now. As we head to late summer and early autumn, it's starting to shed its bark. Now it's thought to do this for a few different reasons, possibly to shed pest or disease that have developed over the tree, and also because this trunk is expanding constantly, that bark needs to pop away so it can keep on growing. But what happens gives us a really beautiful aesthetic as these individual pieces of bark peel away, leaves this fantastic snakeskin effect. And what better way to complement beautiful bark and amazing autumn leaves than a fabulous palette of autumn flowers which are just coming into bloom right now. The science of autumn, fascinating stuff there, Nick, thanks. Now, it's been a fabulous week here at Chelsea and it's the RHS we have to thank for it. And I'm joined by RHS Director General Sue Biggs. Sue, we've had a great time. How's it been for the RHS? Oh, Joe, it's been absolutely fantastic. I mean, we've been so blessed with this weather all week. I mean, if you think back to when May, sh it should have been in May, rained every day. Next week, it's going to rain every day. So the gods are definitely smiling on us. But I've never seen a show with so many happy, smiling faces. Everyone's so glad to be back. I know, and just sort of mingling together and having a good time. It feels like it's really, you know, poignant moment that we're moving on. It's very emotional, Chelsea, I think, isn't it? As it people is. are moving on, it's becoming a little yeah. bit more normal again. Yeah, I mean, it's been a slightly different visitor experience. There's been more space, hasn't there? Yeah, we've got a lot more space so people feel comfortable. And, you know, for everyone to be able to wander around, particularly the feature gardens that we've got here this year, so that they can see a different side of the normal Chelsea experience. And a smaller garden category, you know, yes. like the balconies and the containers, do you think they might be here to stay? They've been I'm, really well I'm, received. Yes, I'm pretty sure they will be. They were due to come in the 2020 show anyway, before we had to cancel it, because what we wanted Chelsea to be is still, it's still the world's best flower show, but we wanted it to be representative of the way people in London are living now, and yes. plenty of people have flats and apartments with balconies, or they're in rented property and they have to just use containers. So those are also gardens. And if you can't do that, then we have the houseplant studios. I was gonna say. They're just amazing, aren't they? Yeah. Aren't they beautiful? They're wonderful. You yeah. don't even have to have a garden, you can garden. I mean, Everyone's um, a gardener, indoors indoor, or outdoors. Indoor gardening is incredibly popular, yeah. so you picked up really on that booming. as well. But you've got the feature gardens here. Yeah. They're, they're tackling some pretty big themes this year, aren't they? They are, they are indeed, and I think, because we launched our sustainability strategy last week and launched the Planet Friendly Gardening campaign, there are 30 million people and gardeners in this country. And I think if we could get everyone to do one or two of these things, you know, go peat free, start gathering water in your garden, we really can make a difference to the climate crisis yeah. and to the biodiversity crisis, which is what the COP26 garden is all about. And here on the Garden of Hope, 
it's all around people. We've had a terrible 18 months, all of us. Yeah. And this is, as you can see in, in the lake there, the pond has got hope even in neon lights yeah. in it. And that's what we all know gardening brings about hope for the well, future. That's, it's not just about the environment. It's about our bodies. It's about our people soul. Well. It's about us as yeah. well. And I mean, that, that's a key message and a key thing about horticulture and gardening yeah. at the moment. It's never been more important, has it? Yeah. People are being rescued and keeping their sanity through gardens and gardening. Yeah. And I think we want that to be the message of Chelsea as well as the fact you can see the world's best gardens and the most amazing plants in there and I have to pay tribute to nursery people and designers who are here who have made a show out of the most difficult circumstances they're yeah, amazing they, everyone's pulled it together and, yeah. and what a fabulous week it's been Great. Sue lovely to see you thank lovely you very to see much. you too thank you well as Sue was saying escaping from our hectic lives even just for a few moments can make a world of difference. And earlier in the week, Juliet Sargent did just that. This garden's been absolutely buzzing with people today, enjoying every detail of it. But I'm feeling really lucky now because I've got a moment just to myself to enjoy it and relax. These beautiful sinuous curves that Aritz created start on the ground, but then they lift up into the air. I know this garden is all about nurturing and feeling enveloped in the planting, but for me, what's really wonderful about it is the airiness. It just has a lovely sense of space and lightness. There's a beautiful breeze blowing across these grasses and reeds creating such a lovely reflection in the water. It feels absolutely beautiful. I just want to breathe and soak it all in. I really love the variety of textures in this garden, but the really thought-provoking detail is the way that this beautiful tree has been sculpted. It really reminds me of how much can be achieved when mankind works in harmony with nature. This garden has different spaces and each one has its own atmosphere. I just love this little spot here, tucked away. It feels so secluded, so calming. And then as I look through the beautiful tracery of the branches, I can see the textures of the plants and then just the soft reflections on the water. I just feel so relaxed. I could stay here forever. All week, we've been seeing firsthand the explosion in the popularity of houseplants. And people here at Chelsea are absolutely loving them which of course is perfect for two great pavilion growers who are making their Chelsea debut. As soon as I saw these plants, I just fell in love with them and then I wanted more. They're just so unusual and amazing. There's a, a, literally a succulent for everyone. I'm Mark. I'm Daniel. And we are Surreal Succulents, and we're here at our nursery outlet located in the grounds of Tremonier Sculpture Gardens in Penzance, Cornwall. We've been friends since school days, so I've been in horticulture since I kind of left school. I was lucky enough to get a, a place on St Michael's Mount. I worked there for 12 years. I spent, well, a lot of time just learning about the plants that we grow now in the nursery. I was actually a, a beach lifeguard down at Sun & Co for 12 years and then I studied my degree and ended up teaching craft and design at a, a university in Cornwall for 12 years. Surreal succulents came about because of a hobby. I collected succulent plants and it turned into a bit of an addiction. So then it just grew from there and then Mark got involved and we just then thought we'd just take it to the shows and, and see how far we can go with it all. We specialise in mainly our own cultivars. Also, we try and bring in plants from around the world, so stuff that you wouldn't normally see in the UK. 
We have roughly about 100 to 150 different species and cultivars at the nursery and we're always adding more, we're always producing more. Some of the plants we're looking at in here are Aeonium Phoenix Flame. That's it's one of our own cultivars. It's something that we feel is, is an incredibly special plant. It's proven hardy down to minus seven. It's a really nice tight clumping form and it just looks really good all year round. And even during the winter, it really puts on a lot of growth and looks really nice. This is aloe polyphyla. It's fantastically architectural and sculptural. It's also known as the spiral aloe, many-leaved aloe, and is actually hardy to minus 15. Sadly, the aloe polyphyla is endangered in habitat. It's only pollinated by hummingbirds. We don't really have any in Cornwall, so we have to hand pollinate this ourselves. We've actually got some seed pods, and we're actually really proud to be able to sustainably produce this plant in-house. Hello. Oh, thank you. How are you? We're really excited to release our brand new range of um, symponiums at the Chelsea Show. So it's a brand new intergenetic cross-species hybrid featuring um, a cross of Aeonium and Sempervivum. We're actually entering this one into Plant of the Year at Chelsea. And we've named it after my favourite and only daughter, Sienna. The succulents are incredibly easy to keep. We've got a little method of keeping them known as the 3D. So number one is drench. When you water your succulents, give them a thorough drench and make sure they're fully saturated. Um, this is what they're used to in, in nature. They get a torrential downpour, so they're fully, fully wet. Number two is to make sure it drains. So make sure there's good free draining soil and make sure there's a nice top layer of top grit so the water drains away. Number three is dry. Allow your plant to become fully dry before watering again. This allows the root system to become fully oxygenated and then you can start the 3D process again. So when they're completely dry, you give them a good drench, you let them drain and then you let them dry again. It's that simple. We're going all out at Chelsea. We try, we're trying something that we've never done before. We're going for a much bigger display. We've got over four metres of vertical garlands. We've got some really um, big yucca restratas that are up to 30 years old. We've got a Dazzlerian longissima that's just going to be firing off like a big water feature over our brand new Symponium range of plants. So it'd just be the succulent garden of Eden, really. To exhibit at Chelsea has been my life dream from the age of 20, 21. You know, to design a garden to exhibit at Chelsea is just phenomenal. To bring a gold home for your best friend, yeah. it's be amazing. What a beautiful display, you know, it just smacks of quality. But, but how, how's Chelsea? Is it what you expected here? It's been more than what we expected. There's a real buzz to the show. Like, I know the, the shows were cancelled last year, then this one was moved. And it's just been so much fun coming here. I mean, it was, you know, it was a big garden. It was a mission to set up the display, but now it's up and everyone's enjoying it. It just makes it so worthwhile. Yeah. And we're really happy with the design of it. It's one of the biggest gardens we've ever, ever attempted. And we've got our, you know, four metres of vertical gardens in. And what we're trying to sort of exhibit is how succulents grow in the wild. So you normally find them on kind of overhangs and cliff faces. And that's what we've tried to catch in the vertical garden. So we kind of designed it to be horticulturally correct for judging. Yeah, horticulturally correct. But also just the way you displayed it has got, given loads of people ideas on how to display, you know, succulents like this in a way, how they can do it in their own exactly, homes. Exactly, yeah. There's, there's loads of different colours and textures and all the forms. There's just really beautiful and we're just trying to simplify it all and just show them how they can recreate this at home yeah. so yeah it's, um, it's, it's really nice well the <laughs> judges obviously loved it you've got a gold medal i mean come on how does that feel uh incredibly emotional it's, no, it was it's amazing <laughs> did you burst into tears we were well, not straight away it took about <laughs> half an hour but then we just went and i was like oh well, that, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah but it was yeah some achievement yeah it's yeah. been a lifelong journey but, wow, wow it's a fantastic yeah. achievement now you've got yeah some new symponiums we've seen a bit of sienna there's um, a destiny over there that's really caught my eye. That's a stunner, isn't it? Yeah, it's, um, it's a really lush, strong plant. It, it's got lovely layers to the leaves as well and really nice colours. It's also got this um, really intriguing veins going through the leaves, which is a bit different that you wouldn't normally see in an in a Aeonium or a Sempervivum. Yeah, no, I just think, I think the way you put it together, 
hopefully we'll see you again next year at Chelsea. Definitely. See definitely. definitely. He's caught definitely. the Chelsea bug this year. So. You've obviously had a discussion about this, but listen, <laughs> yeah. congratulations. It really is stunning. Oh, well done. Thank Beautiful. You. Well, all this week, Adam Frost has been sharing his favourite design trends from the showground. And as the days get shorter, he's truly living up to his name, finding ideas that will help us enjoy the outdoors through to the frosts, do you get it, and beyond. Hey, the nights are starting to draw in and we're going to retreat indoors. The fires are going to go on rugs will come out and we'll probably start watching even more TV. So I'm thinking tonight on take three, we're going to work out how we can get a little bit more out of our gardens over the winter months. And this, the Florence Nightingale Garden, is a good place to start. I think the first point, getting more out of your garden through the winter months has got to be the lighting. There's a silver birch just down there and it's uplit. It's got leaves on it at the moment and they're going to come off over the next few months. But the lighting just brings the whole tree alive. Here, in front of me, that looks beautiful with the reeds back against that wall. That could be a garage wall. You could have lighting through with planting in front. It could be part of a journey back to the house. So work out how it affects your everyday life and then you want to work out how it makes you feel. Remember as well, with the lighting, it doesn't all have to be fixed. Just these lovely little candles set around a scene for a cosy, romantic cup of cocoa in the garden. And I think the next thing has to be a destination point. And look at this arbor. I mean, it's, it's a piece of art. But even a sort of semi-covered area tucked away down the garden that you can disappear to, that's just peaceful. You can have a moment. But the clever thing as well is just these lovely little slots you can look up. Here, you're looking up into trees and the leaves are moving. But it could be the night sky. And I could definitely waste 10 minutes here. So, we got one more thing to find. I feel very privileged to be at the Chelsea Flower Show when everybody has gone home. But the reason is, listen, you get sound, and I think that's got to be the third thing. We forget how much that adds to our garden. You listen, everything calms. And when it comes to gardens, we chase that bigger picture, that idea of perfection. Was well, actually in reality, all we're looking for is a series of moments over 12 months. And as we go into the winter, there's days when the sound in our garden's incredibly crisp. So maybe just the sound of water outside the back door will help get you a little bit more over the coming months. One of the strange things for me about being at Chelsea is although I love it, and it's fascinating, and I wouldn't miss it for the world. I do miss my garden. Uh, I do feel that there are things happening there that I'm missing out on and won't be there when I get back. And of course, it's just being part of that, being part of the season, even as we slide into winter. And Long Meadow in the middle of winter is not a cosy place. But in autumn, it's a joy. And to be honest, I can't wait to get back and see it. But I'm not heading home just yet. And let's take a quick look back on what has been a marvellous week. Wow, this is Chelsea. And it's great to be back. The atmosphere is what makes Chelsea, isn't it? Chelsea is totally inspiring. I've never seen anything quite like it. Princess Anne has just arrived, Prince Edward, and they are all here to enjoy the delights of the flower show. Oh, 
gold medal. Oh. Gold medal. Oh. Gold medal. Oh. Gold medal. Oh. First time at Chelsea. Yeah. And they get a gold. Gold, gold medal. medal. Seventeen. Well, what a wonderful week it's been. I mean, after all this time, it's been emotional too for all of us. Thanks for your company. But we're just time for one last instalment of Ask Monty and Joe. Can't so away. here we go. Antonia Pike asks, I am a novice gardener. My lavender plant has brown buds, but the rest is alive. I think it may have been scorched by the sun. Shall I cut it back for winter or leave it alone? Well, the only thing you can be certain, Antonia, is it hasn't been scorched by the sun. No. <laughs> you can't scorch lavender. No. Uh, certainly not in this country. No. Uh, lavender likes the hottest driest, best drained, actually not necessarily the driest, but certainly the best drained conditions you can give it. And as for cutting it back, yes, you can, although... Um, well, I'm wondering if it's the flower buds from this year that have just faded out, yes. or whether they have actually gone brown. I mean, brown is a sign potentially of overwatering. I yeah, think, I mean, maybe. The, the danger of lavender is always overwatering. Yeah. Uh, it does need some water. Yeah. I've known lavender die through lack of water, particularly yeah. if it's in a pot. But water no more than once a week, and also the compost should be loose enough so the water runs out the bottom of the pot. Yeah. If you're going to cut it back, don't cut back into old wood. No, but just give it a sort of a haircut, yeah. a, bit, a, bit, a, bit, yeah. a little bit more than a haircut. <laughs> Maybe not one of these. OK, Linda Grushi asks, what compost can I use for carnivorous plants, please? Obviously, I can't use peat. Absolutely. I'm wondering about moss. No, not moss. That's a bad idea. Um, what I use, and I grow a lot of Saracenias amongst other things, um, is mainly leaf mould. But you can buy peat-free ericaceous compost. Yeah, that's what I was going yeah. to say. Yeah, And, that would and not moss. I mean, I think because people buy plants with moss, they think that they're growing yeah, in moss. You put moss on the surface for decorative purposes. Yeah. And rainwater. Only rainwater. And they're quite hardy. They're surprisingly hardy. So, uh, but they mustn't dry out. That's really important. I keep mine in a, in a dish, in, in, a, in a, a tray, and that keeps them nice yeah, moist. Yeah. OK, Chris McGee asks, Hi, Monty and Joe, which show garden do you think has the most original and innovative planting here at RHS Chelsea this year? Well, it's not one. that much innovative yeah. plant. Yeah. I was just thinking that maybe <coughs> um, the Guangzhou garden, that's got, you know, they're using plants to filter air and water through. So it's an innovative use of planting. And I think that's it, because I think the key to Chelsea this year is it's not innovative planting, it's just lovely planting. <laughs> lovely yeah. planting too. Well, we will be back tomorrow night at 7 o'clock on BBC Two for a bumper programme packed with our highlights of the week. But until then, bye-bye. Bye-bye.